Many months ago, I promised the American people that I would withdraw from the race if I became a spoiler. A spoiler is someone who will alter the outcome of the election but has no chance of winning. In my heart, I no longer believe that I have a realistic path to electoral victory in the face of this relentless systematic censorship and media control. So I cannot in good conscience ask my staff and volunteers to keep working their long hours or ask my donors to keep giving when I cannot honestly tell them that I have a real path to the White House. Furthermore, our polling consistently showed that by staying on the ballot in the battleground states, I would likely hand the election over to the Democrats with whom I disagree on the most existential issues, censorship, war, and chronic disease. Oh, I want everyone to know that I am not terminating my campaign. I am simply suspending it and not, not ending it. My name, <clears throat> my name will remain on the ballot in most states less than two hours after President Trump narrowly escaped assassination, Callie Means called me on my cell phone. I was then in Las Vegas. Callie is arguably the leading advocate for food safety, for soil regeneration, and for ending the chronic disease epidemic that is destroying America's health and ruining our economy. Callie has exposed the insidious corruption at the FDA, the NIH, the HHS, and the USDA that has caused the epidemic. Allie had been working on and off for my campaign, advising me on those subjects since the beginning. And those subjects have been my primary focus for the last 20 years. I was delighted when Callie told me that day that he had also been advising President Trump. He told me President Trump was anxious to talk to me about chronic disease and other subjects and to explore avenues of cooperation. He asked if I would take a call from the president. President Trump telephoned me a few minutes later, and I met with him the following day. A few weeks later, I met again with President Trump and his family members and close advisors in Florida. In a series of long, intense discussions, I was surprised to discover that we are aligned on many key issues. In those meetings, he suggested that we join forces as a unity party. We talked about Abraham Lincoln's team of rivals. That arrangement would allow us to disagree publicly and privately and fiercely, if need be, on issues over which we differ, while working together on the existential issues upon which we are in concordance. Uh, I was a ferocious critic of many of the policies uh, during his first administration. And, and there are still issues and approaches upon which we continue to have very serious differences. But we are aligned with each other on other key issues like ending the forever wars, ending the childhood disease epidemic, securing the border, protecting freedom of speech, unraveling the corporate capture of our regulatory agencies, getting the U.S. intelligence agencies out of the business of propagandizing and censoring and surveilling Americans and interfering with our elections. Judging by her bellicose belligerent speech last night in Chicago, we can assume that President Harris will be an enthusiastic advocate for this and other neocon military adventures. And President Trump says that he will reopen negotiations with President Putin and end the war overnight as soon as he becomes president. This alone would justify my support for his campaign. Last summer, it looked like no candidate was willing to negotiate a quick end to the Ukraine war, to tackle chronic disease epidemic, to protect free speech,